So, Bismillah Rahman Rahim, Assalamu Alaikum. So, in this video, we will learn about the determination of natural moisture content of soil in the laboratory and uh, in the field as well. So, uh, let's start the video with the basic introduction of uh, the definition of uh, natural soil moisture content. So, the definition is it is basically the ratio of weight of water contained in the pores of soils to the weight of soil solid. Soil solid means uh, dry mass of soil. So we can define moisture content as the ratio of weight of water to the weight of soil solids. You might be confused that the uh, ratio or percentage of uh, moisture content should be like that. Uh, it should be weight of water to the total weight of soil. But uh, in this, uh, uh, in this uh, soil moisture content, uh, we cannot uh, take total weight of soil in the denominator because the reason is, you can see total weight of soil is basically the uh, weight of soil solids plus uh, weight of water. Uh, in the denominator, uh, denominator, the weight of water is basically a variable quantity. So it depends upon the uh, time and uh, the conditions. So it changes. It means if the denominator is variable, then we cannot determine the accurate moisture content. So that's why we uh, measure the moisture content of soil uh, with respect to uh, weight of soil solids because dry weight of soil is always constant it cannot be changed so it means the moisture content that is uh, given in percentage can be represented as weight of water to the weight of soil solids now what are the types of natural moisture content so first one is volumetric water content that can be represented by this sign it is the ratio of volume of water to the wet volume of the soil uh, the volumetric water content is basically used in the field of uh, agriculture or irrigation so it is mostly used in uh, irrigation or agriculture uh, field in soil uh, mechanics or in the field of geotechnical engineering, gravimetric water content is uh, normally used. So it is uh, already explained that it is the ratio of uh, weight of water to the weight of soil solids. Now, what are the methods to determine the natural moisture content? So there are numerous uh, methods to determine the uh, moisture content of the soil one is oven dry method and the second one is sand bath method and alcohol method infrared lamp and torion method then here comes the speedy moisture test uh, also called calcium carbide method uh, it is basically uh, used uh, at site to determine the moisture content of the soil and then the pycnometer method. So uh, we will discuss uh, discuss two methods. One oven dry method that is a laboratory method, and the second we will discuss about the speedy moisture content in this lecture. So coming towards the oven dry method, that is a laboratory method to determine the natural moisture content of the soil. So it comprises of oven. You can see in the figure. And what is the scope uh, of determining the moisture content of the soil? So uh, water basically affect the density, shear strength, bulking and swelling of the soil. Then its determination is important to incorporate its effect on the performance of an, any engineering structure. So uh, it is basically very important to determine the moisture content of the soil it is the basic uh, property because it affects soil properties the engineering properties of the soil the presence of excess of uh, water in the soil 
cause the reduction in the strength of the soil. So there are other numerous uh, effects of presence of moisture content in the soil. Now what equipment is required to perform the oven dry method? So the first one is empty airtight containers. You need to have the airtight containers. You need to have electric balance of sufficient sensitivity that can measure the weight of soil and weight of container. Then electric oven to dry the soil. Now what is the procedure? Firstly, you need to clean the empty container and then weight it. That is W1. It means W1 is the weight of empty container. Now fill the container with wet soil up to two thirds of it and weigh it, uh, that will be W2. So now, W2 is basically weight of container plus weight of wet soil. Now, place the container in oven for 24 hours at about, uh, sorry, it's, uh, it's 105 degrees Celsius, not 1050 degrees Celsius. It's 105 degrees Celsius to 110 degrees Celsius. So we can, uh, we can remove it like so we can remove it to avoid any confusion so it is basically 105 degrees celsius to 110 degrees celsius the temperature should be set uh, carefully because if the soil is organic then the temperature of 105 to 110 degrees Celsius can change the properties of the soil. So it is recommended to carefully uh, use these figures of the temperature. For organic soil, you will not use uh, 105 or 110 degrees Celsius. In, in that case, it is recommended to use 60 to 70 degrees Celsius temperature for organic uh, soils. Take out the sample after 24 hours and weigh it, that is W3. Depends upon the soil, uh, you can place the soil in oven for 18 hours as well. Now W3 is the weight of dry soil plus container. Now if you want to find out the moisture content in the percentage, as the formula is weight of water to the weight of soil solids. So weight of water is basically W2 weight of wet soil plus container minus weight of dry soil plus container. So when we subtract the weight of wet soil from weight of dry soil, then the remaining amount is basically weight of water. Then uh, in the denominator, that is weight of soil solids. So W3 is weight of container plus dry soil. If we subtract the weight of container, then we obtain the weight of soil solid. So in this way, we can calculate the uh, natural moisture content using the oven dry method. So uh, in this way, you can uh, draw a table like weight of the container, that is W1, weight of the container with lead plus wet soil, that is W2, then weight of container with lead plus dry soil, that is W3. Water content can be found out by this formula. No. Uh, you should uh, have uh, to perform uh, two to three tests of soil moisture content and then you can take the average uh, of these uh, moisture content values. Now discussion. It is convenient to maintain a table of weights. Weighing tin weights. It is convenient to maintain a table of weighing tin weights. Weighing tins should be thoroughly clean and re weighed at least every six months. If tins become dirty or tarnished, they should be thoroughly cleaned immediately and re weighed. The sample may be crumbled to assist drying, but care is necessary to avoid loss of any soil. Now, the soils containing gypsum, as I earlier told, that if the soil is containing organic content, then on heating, 
it may lose the water of crystallization. Therefore, a moisture content determined by this method will be affected by approximately 0.1% for each 1% of gypsum. So, if it is suspected that gypsum is present in the soil, then uh, sample should be dried at 80 degrees Celsius for a longer period and report the method used. So, recommendation. What are the recommendations for the minimum sample size? So, if the maximum size of soil particle passing the sieve number 4, then it is recommended to use 100 gram of soil sample. If the soil sample is passing from sieve number 40, then use 10 to 50 gram. And uh, if uh, uh, it is passing from 12.5 mm, then use 300 gram. And if it, if it is passing from 50 mm, then use 1000 gram soil sample. So that's all about the oven dry method. That was the laboratory determination of natural moisture content of the soil. Now, speedy moisture test, as I earlier mentioned, it is a field test to determine the moisture content of the soil. It takes less time to determine moisture content of the soil in the field. Uh, it uses calcium carbide, which reacts with the moisture content of the soil to produce the acetylene gas. That is basically directly proportional to the moisture content produced uh, and present in a soil sample. Moisture content determination in terms of wet mass basis. So uh, this method, uh, the different difference from the previous method is that it uh, measures the moisture content in terms of wet mass basis. Then we have to convert the mass, wet mass into the dry mass. Speedy moisture tester, the equipment required. Uh, you can see here the speedy moisture tester. We then place the calcium carbide in the in this um, speedy moisture test along with the wet soil then uh, calcium carbide suddenly reacts with the wet soil and when uh, it reacts with the calcium carbide uh, carbide reagent then acetylene gas is produced that acetylene gas basically uh, uh, moves this dial gauge uh, the amount of this gas is uh, directly influencing the movement of this dial gauge. So then this dial gauge gives us the uh, moisture content in terms of wet mass basis. So uh, this is speedy moisture test uh, apparatus required to perform speedy moisture test. Uh, so scoops to put the uh, calcium carbide in the speedy moisture tester. Then steel balls. These steel balls are required to break the lumps of wet soil mass. If the soil is uh, cohesive, then the steel balls are required to break the lumps of uh, that cohesive soils. So you can see here the complete apparatus of speedy moisture tester. This is called the beam balance. Uh, why it is, uh, uh, for what purpose this is used, we will discuss in the procedure. Uh, section calcium carbide uh, again that is used uh, to react with the wet soil to produce acetylene gas cleaning brush procedure firstly place approximately six uh, six, six gram wet soil uh, on the pad such that beam balance coincide with the index mark okay you can see here uh, place the soil sample here uh, approximately 6 gram then this beam balance uh, will be in the complete horizontal direction it should be balanced with the index mark so it means we will place 6 gram of soil such that beam balance coincide with the index mark it means it becomes horizontal like that if uh, the 5 gram soil sample is causing uh, this beam balance to stable or uh, in the horizontal direction then 5 gram soil sample will be used but usually uh, as per the calibration of this equipment 6 gram of soil is required to balance this beam so place the wet soil in the moisture meter that is basically speedy moisture and a scoop of calcium carbide reagent holding the moisture tester horizontal so that it does not move out 
clamp and seal tightly. Now you have to place the soil in this uh, cylindrical bottle and then seal and clamp tightly. Now shake this apparatus here. Turn the moisture meter to bring the gauge downward. Shake vigorously up and down and horizontally for few seconds. For few seconds you have to shake because the soil will have to react with the calcium carbide to produce the acetylene gas. And if the soil is cohesive then we have to place the uh, steel balls to break the lumps of the soil. Repeat shaking cycle for about 5 minutes. In case of clay soil, please place steel balls so that clumps of soil can be uh, broken while shaking. Record the gauge reading to determine moisture content in terms of wet mass. For moisture content in terms of dry mass, we have to use this relation. Now, uh, this M is basically obtained from the dial gauge reading that is uh, in terms of wet mass basis. So using this formula we can convert the moisture content in terms of dry mass. So M divided by 100 minus M into 100. So what is the discussion? Calcium carbide is highly susceptible to moisture content absorption uh, and should not be kept exposed to atmosphere. Lid of its container should be kept tightly closed. As soon as the reagent suffers deterioration, it should be replaced. Otherwise, results on the lower side will be obtained. So, uh, if the reagent is expired, if the reagent is not um, of the good quality, then the results can be uh, effective. So, these are some of the drawbacks of this test. So, you need to be careful uh, regarding the use of calcium carbide. You have to be accurate uh, with this uh, apparatus. So, because uh, there can be more errors uh, for the determination of uh, moisture content using speedy moisture. So uh, we can make the comparison of these both uh, methods. Uh, oven dry method is a time taking method but more accurate than the speedy moisture. Speedy moisture test has uh, some drawbacks as I discussed. Uh, it is faster but it requires uh, careful operation. So that's all from uh, this lecture. I hope you like the video. If you like the video, don't forget to subscribe and share. Thank you and uh, Allah Hafiz.